The demilitarized zone between North and South Korea might very well be the most on-edge border in the world. Well, except for this one, of course. Decades of tense relations between the two Koreas and their allies have led to many strange incidents, such as that time that four US soldiers defected to North Korea and spent decades living in the country as movie stars. But I've told you that story already. Then there was the more recent time where another US soldier defected to North Korea only for them to send him back two months later. Wow, so they didn't want that guy to stick around, huh? Starting to think North Korea might not be a very progressive country. Anyway, the incident I'm here to talk about was caused by a tree. On the western end of the DMZ lies a military outpost called the Joint Security Area. It's the only spot on the border where soldiers for North and South Korea are close enough to interact. It exists to facilitate diplomatic relations, such as this time that the leaders of both countries met there and held hands for some reason. But for every peaceful hand-holding incident in the Joint Security Area, there is a brutal murder incident to go along with it. In August of 1976, the United Nations Command, which was basically the US and South Korea, decided to trim the branches of a poplar tree which was blocking the view at a part of the border. The tree was located near what is known as the Bridge of No Return, which sounds like a pretty ineffective bridge. A group of five members of the Korean Service Corps were the ones who were supposed to do the tree trimming, but they were escorted by a security team consisting of 14 soldiers from both the US and South Korean armies. Once they began the pruning process, they were quickly interrupted by a group of 15 North Korean soldiers, led by Senior Lieutenant Pak Chul. The Americans had given Pak the nickname Lieutenant Bulldog because of how confrontational he was. But sadly, dogs are banned in North Korea, so Lieutenant Bulldog will never know how sick his nickname is. Lieutenant Bulldog confronted the leader of the tree trimming coalition, Captain Arthur Bonifas, and told him to stop trimming the tree. Supposedly, it had been planted by North Korean leader Kim Il-sung. I don't know when he found the time to plant a tree in the middle of the most highly guarded part of the DMZ, but who are we to question him? This was actually the third time that forces from the United Nations Command had attempted to trim the tree, with the first two attempts being stopped by the North Koreans and the rain. So Captain Bonifas was determined to get it done. He told the North Koreans that they were simply trying to trim the tree and it really wasn't a big deal at all. But Lieutenant Bulldog lived up to his reputation and called for reinforcements. Another 15 North Korean soldiers crossed the bridge, giving them double the forces of the UNC. The military UNC, that is, not the dominant March Madness school. Again, the K-9 lieutenant asked Captain Bonifas to stop trimming the tree. But Bonifas replied by turning his back on the North Koreans, which is as insulting in their culture as it is in any culture. So Lieutenant Bulldog removed his watch, carefully wrapped it in a handkerchief, and put it in his pocket before yelling, kill the bastards. Say what you want about the man, but at least he respects some good wrist wear. I guess they should have been calling him Lieutenant Bulgari. Sorry guys, it's been a long year. I'm kind of phoning it in for this one. It should be noted that the number of guns in the joint security area is heavily limited, and if anyone used them, the conflict would immediately get significantly worse. So while some members of the party did have sidearms on them, the fight that took place was entirely fists and blunt weapons. So just like that, 45 grown men began punching each other over a tree. Lieutenant Bulldog immediately knocked down Captain Bonifas with a karate chop to the back of the head, at which point five North Korean soldiers began beating and kicking him on the ground. Meanwhile, the five men who had been trimming the tree dropped their axes in fear, probably because they weren't trained for military fistfights in the middle of the DMZ. But some North Korean soldiers picked up the axes and began using them as weapons, swinging at the UNC soldiers. After a few minutes of this, the fight just kind of ended, probably because everyone realized how ridiculous the whole thing was. But as the North Koreans returned to their base across the Bridge of No Return, the UNC forces realized that Captain Bonifas was in dire condition after being beaten by the soldiers. He was rushed to the nearest medical station, but it was too late to save him. To make matters worse, when the UNC troops made it back to their base, they realized that they were missing another man too. The platoon leader, Lieutenant Mark Barrett, was nowhere to be found. The troops rushed back to the scene of the fight and found Barrett's body laying in a ditch after being attacked by the axes that the North Koreans had picked up. So because Lieutenant Bulldog didn't like the idea of the UNC trimming a random poplar tree, two men were brutally murdered. Seems like the decision of a rational and totally normal country. And to make the whole thing even sadder, Captain Bonifas was only days away from going home. I know that sounds like a very morbid joke, but I'm serious. He was about to return to the US for a new position. So with two men dead and the tree still untrimmed, the United States military was furious, but they knew that they had to act carefully to avoid a war. 
The whole dilemma made it all the way to the desk of President Gerald Ford, who decided the best move was to not only cut down the tree, but to cut it down with such a show of force that it would terrify North Korea and prevent any further conflict. Over the next two days, the US military planned the most intense tree cutting of all time. So at 7 a.m. on August 21st, three days after the murders, the UNC conducted Operation Paul Bunyan. And yes, they actually named the operation after the giant mythical lumberjack from American folklore. And if you're not American and you're wondering why we have a folk hero who's a giant lumberjack, we don't know either. Operation Paul Bunyan began with a convoy of 23 vehicles driving into the JSA, containing two eight-man teams of military engineers equipped with chainsaws. Along with them were two 30-man security platoons armed with pistols and axe handles, which is only one step away from making them all wear a plaid red shirt and a fake beard. But the lumberjacks were far from the only soldiers involved. The entire operation included 813 men, all spread out along the DMZ. On top of that, hovering over the men were 27 helicopters, including seven Cobra attack helicopters. Behind them were nuclear-capable B-52 Stratofortress bombers, F-4 Phantom II jets, and additional fighter jets from the South Korean military. And if that still wasn't enough, the aircraft carrier USS Midway moved into the area, waiting offshore where the North Koreans could see it. So, in an effort to cut down a tree, the United Nations Command mobilized a force more powerful than some countries' entire militaries. Among the hundreds of men was a 64-man Special Forces Task Force from the South Korean military, who were all trained in Taekwondo, which feels like a task force that would only be helpful in this exact situation. Those men stood at the end of the Bridge of No Return, ripped open their shirts to reveal Claymore mines strapped to their chests, and began yelling at the North Koreans to cross the bridge. North Korea responded with about 150 troops armed with machine guns, but they just stood on their side of the border and watched the whole thing go down. One of the members of the Lumberjack Army described the moment by saying, Nukes in the air, who knows how much artillery from both sides concentrated on our location, crazy guys with mines on their chests yelling at the North Koreans to come on over, the KPA less than 100 meters away with machine guns trained on us, and me and my buddies are standing around with axe handles and 45s. At some point in the process, the U.S. decided that cutting down the tree wasn't sending enough of a message. Not to mention that it would have taken a few hours, and those guys with the claymores on their chests can only scream for so long. So they decided to cut off all the branches and leave the trunk behind as a memento of the mighty American military. So the engineers pulled out some ladders and began chainsawing away. After 42 minutes, the job was done. All of the troops packed up and returned to their bases, leaving behind the stump of an abused tree. Here's a picture of the remnants of the tree, who unknowingly found itself in the middle of a decades-long land dispute, the casualty of a conflict in which it had no allegiance. But thankfully, the tree did not become the Franz Ferdinand of its time, as a war was not started because of its death. In fact, it seems that Operation Paul Bunyan really did terrify the North Koreans. One intelligence analyst who was monitoring the North Korean radio waves said that the whole thing, quote, blew their fucking minds. That very same day, North Korean leader Kim Il-sung sent a message to the United Nations Command, saying, It is regretful that an incident occurred in the Joint Security Area. An effort must be made so that such incidents may not recur in the future. Our side will never provoke first, but take self-defensive measures only when provocation occurs. But considering provocation to them includes some mild gardening, that's not much of a promise. Still, the UNC viewed the whole thing as a success or at least as much of a success as you can have when two people are killed and you're trying to prevent a war from starting over a tree. And the legacy of the tree continued when a U.S. Army general had some of the wood from the tree carved into something called a swagger stick, which is apparently a short stick carried by someone in the military as a symbol of authority, because nothing instills fear like a man holding a cute little wand. The U.S. finally put the tree out of its misery by removing its mangled corpse in 1987, replacing it with a monument to Captain Boniface and Lieutenant Barrett. So soldiers in the UNC will always know that if they get brutally murdered, the US will aggressively obliterate a tree in their honor. Now please consider subscribing or the trees will take revenge on mankind.